so it started as a one-woman play at the Edinburgh Festival, and Phoebe, uh, who's the writer, creator, plays Fleabag, she, um, she wrote it as a kind of, um, it was everything that she felt she was missing as an actress in the parts that she was being um, offered. So um, the female roles were kind of always foils to the male leads or, um, you know, they were damsels or, and she just felt like she wrote what she wished that she could, that she could hear. So it started there and then, um, it, had, it did amazingly well as a, as a kind of piece of theatre, won lots of awards, and then um, the BBC commissioned a half-hour um, pilot script because it was quite a difficult thing to turn it from the original hour-long play into a into a TV script. Not least because you had to write all the characters out because obviously she played all of them herself in the original. So it started as a half-hour pilot script, and then I came on board at that point um, to. Um, get that script onto its feet as a read-through with more or less the same cast we've got now actually and we did the read-through and then the BBC commissioned um, a, the pilot from that read-through and then when we made the pilot then uh, Amazon came on board and we made the kind of final five of those six episodes. The two brothers pictures are we're the UK producers so uh, I'm the producer and then Jack and Harry Williams and Phoebe are Phoebe Waller-Bridge are all the execs and then in the US um, Ryan Andalina and Joe Lewis at Amazon. Uh, Amazon Studios are our US part, uh, producers. And at uh, BBC, um, Chris Sussman and uh, Shane Allen were our producers there. Well, I suppose we didn't know that that's what we were doing at the beginning because we just made the pilot. You never know if it's, you know, what, where it will extend to. So I suppose. Um, there are a lot. There are a lot of jokes in that first one because that's where Phoebe starts writing. She starts with the things that make her laugh, and then kind of tracks a story in between those beats. But starting with jokes meant that 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 top episode just does have a real kind of rough and tumble feel. It's her on a night out, going from you know date to bar to bed to you know and all these different places. Um, but where we end up is with her um, explaining how um, this best friend who we've seen in kind of uh, memories, but we don't quite, we can't quite place where she is. We find out that she has died, and more than that, that she accidentally committed suicide because her boyfriend cheated on her, and she wanted to teach him a lesson. So she ran out in front of her cycle lane, hoping to break a finger, and ended up um, actually being knocked in front of a car and being killed. So there's this horribly sad story underneath it all, which makes you realise that all those kind of slight wry looks to camera, this kind of mask of bravado that Fleabag's had this whole time is a real, is a, is a real mask. And actually, um, the rest of the series tracks um, the kind of truth underneath that. And you begin to realise that Fleabag is not the reliable narrator that you think she might be. And it kind of underplays the confidence and the kind of cockiness. We were always towing that line between keeping her uh, adorable and monstrous because she's both and she's not totally likeable. And that was also a big thing for us because um, you so often hear, um, I, I didn't really like her when we thought actually it's much more interesting if she's got more facets to her personality because most people aren't all likeable or all not likeable. So, so I suppose that first episode you just see a kind of flicker of that and then we kind of pull the rope and she kind of unravels as the series goes on. Lots of them Phoebe had in her head already so uh, for example she was at drama school with Sean who plays Claire the sister um, and she'd already always thought of Hugh Skinner as Harry the kind of adorable boyfriend. Um, we didn't know where Boo was going to come from, who's obviously such a key part because she's this, you know, uh, this rock best friend um, who only appears in flashback, which is difficult for an actor to, to pull off. Um, so Jenny, we found uh, our casting director's um, VHJ just kind of understood completely what that role was. And we saw Jenny the first, I think she might have even been the first one to come in and she just sat down and we were like, oh, there she is. OK. And it was it was just the sort of chemistry between her and Phoebe straight away. Um, and then, uh, and Olivia Coleman, obviously, who plays that um, amazing 
awful godmother. Um, that came from uh, Phoebe and Olivia were in a play together uh, several years ago and um, really made each other laugh always and um, Olivia was desperate to play uh, a sort of total bitch and so that gave her the perfect opportunity to kind of play that out. <laughs>